Alright, hey guys, uh, this will be kind of like a tutorial on making a spark app Tesla coil. Um, I'm not going to show you every little detail, I'm going to mainly just talk about it and kind of show you uh, little bits and pieces here um, as I, I will actually build one, um, but I'm not going to go into full on detail about building every single part as that's kind of cheating if you don't do some of the work yourself, uh, some of the research yourself. Um, but I will give you all the basic um, information that you need. Uh, hold in the wall. Uh, power supply. For your power supply, I would recommend an NST or an oil burner transformer. Something that you're going to get at least 6,000 volts out of. Uh, one thing, uh, I take no responsibility for any injuries or anything like that for anyone following my videos. If you hurt yourself building this, I am not responsible. Um, just some legal stuff. I guess because you probably could. There'd be a lawyer out there willing to help you sue me um, nowadays. Uh, so, but anyways, for power supply, it's something at least 6,000 volts uh, to about 15,000 volts. Um, you don't need a whole lot if you're going to build just a small one like I'm going to. You know, something like this. I mean, 6,000 volts is plenty. So just something small. I had a 9,000 volt NST that I got for 45 bucks from a surplus store. So I mean they're not expensive for the most part. Uh, you know if you're a little kid or whatever, you know not little, but you know if you're some someone who doesn't have a job, you know do some chores around the house or something, or go out and rake somebody's yard or whatever. I don't know. It's kind of winter time here where I live, so I don't know. Go snow, go shovel some snow, even though it's been kind of warm. It was like 55 today. But uh, for the power supply, yeah, that's pretty much what you need. Just something that's going to fly 6,000 volts at a moderate current. Um, when when an NST says, uh, uh, say it's a 9,000 volt, when it says 9,000 volts and 30 milliamps, that doesn't mean 9,000 volts at 30 milliamps. That means an open circuit voltage of 9,000 volts and a closed circuit amperage of 30 milliamps. So, do not get that confused, because you, when you short it out, you're going to have a maximum current draw of 30 milliamps, but you're not going to have anywhere near 9,000 volts. So, anyways, moving on. Uh, you're going to need some chokes. Uh, these are going to basically dissipate or help uh, prevent any kickback from going into the transformer and possibly ruining it, and even actually sending it into the wall power uh, sending it throughout your house destroying everything that's plugged in to your walls so even though I didn't notice anything with these smaller coils but if you're building a bigger one you definitely will need chokes they're an absolute necessity uh, they're basically what a choke is is just basically say take something like a marker or something and wind like a hundred turns of wire on there capable of carrying the voltage and the current that you have uh, probably like, I don't know, 26 gauge, 24 gauge wire would work if you're making just a small one like I am, otherwise probably 18 gauge, actually probably not even that thick, you probably get away from 22 gauge. So, uh, the primary. For the primary, you're going to need something that is, a uh, good rule of thumb is about double the size of your secondary. When I say double the size, I mean double the size of the form. I'm using three quarter inch pipe, so I'm going to use one and a half inch pipe for the primary form. And I haven't quite decided if I'm going to do helical or a flat spiral or a slight conical. Um, I'll probably do like a slight conical thing j just because of the fact that they look cool. Um, either that or a flat spiral. By flat spiral I mean like this. This is what your primary looks like. Just like that. And a conical looks like this. And your wire is wound like that. It's wound like this and it goes up. So and then a helical is just you know straight up and down. Wound on a pipe goes just straight up. Now that's pretty much all you need, just uh about eighteen gauge wire would work fine. Or you can get fancy and you can use uh some small cup tubing. Um there's I think 3 sixteenths is the smallest it goes for copper tubing, uh, 3 sixteenths outer diameter. So, uh, it, I don't know, it looks, it'd probably bend way too easily to actually wind any good um, 
primaries, but I don't know, it's probably worth the shot, I guess. A secondary, uh, for your secondary, you're going to need uh, some PVC pipe. Um, I'm using PVC pipe anyways. Uh, something rigid and round. Um, and PVC pipe uh, works amazingly. Um, you can also use ABS pipe, I think. Actually, maybe not. I don't know. I don't recommend ABS pipe because I've never used it. I don't know what the difference is exactly um, between the plastics. You can use, like, the old uh, cardboard rolls from like aluminum foil and ceramic wrap and stuff like that. I've used those. At, uh, I've used those. Work pretty good. Paper towel rolls not so much as they bend really easily. So if you accidentally you know tip your foil over and it hits something or whatever, it can uh, dent it and whatnot. So I recommend PVC pipe. It's not expensive. This stuff right here, I pay 39 cents for my local hardware store per foot. So don't tell me that you can't afford it because that's a load of shit. Unless you're like poor and living on the streets, but even then, I'm pretty sure you could find 39 cents. I mean, come on. Uh, for a capacitor, um, you're gonna need. I would, if it's your first coil, I'd recommend a salt water cap. Uh, yeah, like I did in my videos, they work amazingly. They're easy to tune. You know, add a little bit of extra aluminum foil to add a few picofarads, or you know, add a whole another bottle to add another nanofarad. So. That helps to fine tune because if you got, if you actually buy capacitors, then you're gonna have to design around those capacitors, and that's not always fun. Especially if it's your first coil and you don't know exactly what you're doing, then it becomes a problem. Spark gap. Uh, also with the capacitors, if this is your first coil, I'm not talking about capacitors or anything like that. Go learn yourself. Google Tesla coil capacitor, and you know, do some research on that. Uh, you know, do some work yourself. Uh, spark gap. For a spark gap, you can go as simple as just two electrodes spaced apart, however far. That works, but not very well. It's going to be very inefficient at transferring the power to the primary. Better way to go would take some copper pipe, uh, probably half inch or so, maybe even uh, three sixteenths. I don't know how small it goes, but. Um, Cut it into little sections like that. I don't know, probably I don't know, 25 or so millimeters, about an inch, and just bolt them onto a board about a half a millimeter, half a millimeter to a millimeter apart. Uh, do about six or seven of those, just so you can get a good spark gap. Uh, depending on the voltage, uh, one millimeter equals about 1,000 volts. Um, so just keep that in mind if you have a 9,000 volt. Transformer do about uh, nine gaps, and then you can, uh, at the very minimum, nine gaps. And then if you want to get a little bit fancy, you can go up to like twelve, so you can fine tune your spark gap. Um, I think that's it. You're gonna need your miscellaneous ends like extra wire. Uh, your top load. Um, I forgot to mention top load. For your top load, you can use a lot of things. Uh, easiest thing I could recommend right off the top of my head would be get uh, two cans, uh, like aluminum pop cans, and cut them about, cut the bottom off about that much, sand the, sand the paint off, and then push them together uh, like an alcohol stove, like a Pepsi, like a Pepsi stove. And then uh, you could uh, set your wire on the top of the form. And kind of tack it into place with a little bit of super glue or something at the very top, and just have it dangling there. So when you set the when you set the actual Pepsi can or the Pepsi the can bottoms on it, it touches, and that'll give you a nice smooth toroid for the most part. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, yeah, you need your basic you know hardware and stuff to put it together, but that should be about it. Uh, you'll also want a safety gap also, by the way. Uh, safety gap right after the transformer, after the output of the transformer. If you're using a center tapped um, or a midpoint grounded transformer, then what you want to do is take a what? Take, make a spark gap right after both of the terminals and set it uh, for, if it's a 9,000 volt, then set it for about uh, 10 milli, about 10 millimeters or so. And uh, 
and uh, then take a center electrode and stick it just underneath that. Oh, the computer went into screensaver mode. I thought it was shutting off. I was like, oh shit. Um, just underneath that, uh, so when you turn it on, it doesn't spark between the electrodes, but if you were to get anything above what the transformer is rated for, it would spark. And that center electrode needs to be grounded uh, to mains ground. So, um, oh, you're going to also want to earth ground uh, for the Tesla coil. Um, either that, or you can run it through a Terry filter, I think it's called. I think you can run the... I think you can run the uh, the uh, what needs to be grounded on the secondary. I think you can run it through a Terry filter, but that's a little complex for just a tiny little coil like this. I mean, you could run it straight to ground if you are using chokes. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I most I'm pretty sure that the household ground here, the you know, the ground here, goes straight into the actual ground, like Earth itself. The Earth pin does so. Other places, I don't know. It depends on how your house is set up and whatnot. But it does go straight to ground here. So that's nice. So I can just plug it in right to the earth ground pin on my, uh, on my wall plug, and it will just automatically earth it. Um, it does have to run through the house, so be careful depending on where your plug is. Uh, mine is actually, I live out in the garage, more or less. So I got a plug right over here that I can uh, that runs the earth runs straight up to the ground, so that's nice. So you don't have to worry about that. But if you're using something in the middle of the house, I'd probably just not even ground it. Uh, just run the wire away from all the electronics, and you should be good. Or from the rest of the not the electronics. There's hardly any electronics involved. There is, but not electronics like I'm talking about. I'm talking about this. Um, just run it kind of off and out, and you can set up a small little, like in a little antenna, like I did on mine, and you can have it spark towards that. Um, take like a like a needle or something and place it on the top load, and that'll and then your sparks will most of the sparks will go off the needle. So, and you can. Yeah. I think that's it for this video. So in the next video, I will work on the secondary and get that started for you guys. And if there's time tonight, I don't know, I'm kind of tired, if I'm not, it's like 1 in the morning. So, um, yeah, that's about it. So we're going to start on the secondary. Um, or something, maybe actually, no, I'll start on the power supply. Yeah, I'll go in order. I'll go in order on my list here. So we'll start with the power supply in the next video. Give me a little while, because I don't actually have anything really just sitting around so I'll have to find something that I can use but uh, yeah, next video should be up in about an hour or so so peace out see you in the next one